Okay, so today we're going to try and make one of these, a pinhole camera. So, let's say you take a photo. As simple as that. And it's made out of an old bit of film, which is here, and a new bit of film, which is here. And the bit in the middle is a matchbox, just like this one. So, what you need to do first is find the centre of the matchbox. So, the easiest way to do that is to just draw a line from corner to corner. So draw a line from corner to corner, and where they meet, that's where you have to cut a bit of a square hole. Um, so get yourself a knife, and very carefully start cutting a square hole. This doesn't have to be done to a specific size necessarily, just very gently cut in and just the, if, you, if, you put it, if you push too hard you'll end up with loads of fibres sticking out and they will appear on the pictures you take. Some fibres are okay but not lots of fibres because uh, some fibres give it a, a certain look but you've got to make sure that the light can actually come through. So there we have a bit of a hole. Doesn't have to be any neater than that really. And then what you need to do is find the centre of the inside of the matchbox. Try and get as close as you can to the centre. Any mistakes you make will affect your photos. Um, each camera will kind of, every time you make one you get a slightly different effect and each one will look a little bit different so that's part of the charm of it really. Right so the next thing you have to do is make a square for the, the framing of the camera so what we're going to do is we're going to cut out a square in the tray part of the matchbox. What I do is I try and find 12 in the centre, 12 millimetres and I mark off 0 and I mark off 24 and there you have a 24 millimetre size square and then I do the same this way Other people prefer to measure 12 there and 12 there. I just prefer to measure it in one go. Right, so try and join up your square. You could try really hard to make a perfect square, but it doesn't matter too much. If your frames are not perfect, it will just look a little bit, the pictures will just look a little bit wonky, but again, you're making a camera out of a matchbox, so things aren't going to look like perfect anyway okay so we have a 24 millimeter by 24 millimeter square and what you need to do is then start cutting it out so very gently start scoring a line across your square just push gently if you push hard you'll end up tearing bits of the tray rather than cutting into it and you'll get raggedy edges you probably get raggedy edges anyway, even if you're really careful. But a little bit of raggedy edge is okay. There you go. You have the beginning of your matchbox camera. You can put it together if you want. So you need to start colouring in the inside of your matchbox black. This is so you don't get any... Well, you don't get too many. You will get some. You don't get too many reflections inside. And it doesn't... It won't cause it to create any weird artefacts, any weird reflections and, and weird picture effects. However, there will be a few weird picture effects anyway. And again, these aren't a bad thing because it will help enhance that matchbox quality of your photographs. So as well as the back there, you need to colour in the sides as best as you can really. And then need to colour in the inside of the sleeve. 
sleeve which goes like that. So you need to start colouring in inside of that. You don't need to colour it all inside, just the other side of this piece. So just here. Colour in this as best as you can. It's pretty hard because well you're colouring on the, the inside. So there's me doing that side. Try and do the other side. Just like that. Just colour in as much as you can. It's not going to be easy depending on what pen you've got. So once you've done that you can start thinking about the pinhole. Now this is uh, a window where the pinhole will sit. Now, we don't actually use cardboard for the pinhole because of the fibres that, that obstruct the lens. Well not really a lens, it's a pinhole. So instead of cardboard we stick on a bit of aluminium. It's just a small square cut to well, I'll show you what size it's got to. It doesn't have to be exact, but it is 13 millimeters. 13 by 13, pretty much. So, using your piece of cardboard as a backing, just try and gently push a hole in as close to the center of your aluminum aluminium, whatever you want to call it, with a pin. And try not to push the pin all the way through, but try and make sure that light passes through. There is a hole there. It's very, very small, but the smaller your hole is, the more in focus your pictures will be. So you want it to be very small. So, once you've made your hole, you can colour in the back of your piece of metal, black, tape your pinhole to the front of your camera using some of this. Some black insulation tape. So here we go, let's try and use some black insulation tape to tape this together. So you want to try not to cover up your hole with tape. Just tape up the side so it stays in position. Push it nice and tight and make sure it's not going anywhere. So what we need to do now is make a shutter. What we're going to do is make a piece of card to go over the top. Cut up little square in it so cut a square out of your card place the card over your pinhole and make sure that the pinhole is still visible get some tape stick it down what I try and do is get some tape and just split it in half So cover up the sides and the bottom of this piece of card, but not the top. So you have the sides and the bottom covered, but not the top. And the reason you leave the top open is so we can drop something in there to act as a shutter. So you can get any other bit of card and use that to open and close your shutter. So it should look like that about now and what you can start to do now is start putting it together so get your film out of the box and feed your film through so that it looks something like this pull a bit of film through feed it through the back press it up to the back of the camera so that the light sensitive side is facing forward and the back which is usually darker is, is facing backwards basically the film should look like this so that it's upside down if you imagine this to be the top of the camera this is the bottom of the camera the film that you feed in should be on that side with this little bit facing downwards to pull that through about that much and then 
insert, insert your tray that way round so that it presses the film up against the back of the camera and get an old bit of film that's been processed at the lab and it should just have a little bit of film left on it like that. You can get these from pretty much any uh, film processing lab for free or sometimes you can buy them on eBay for a pretty low price. But get one of those and what you want to do is cut your film here and sellotape your new piece of film with your old piece of film to the other side and it should look something like this like that. Let's zoom out. So you've got your new film here, your old piece of film here, and a piece of sellotape taping them both together. What I've done is I've taped around both sides, make it nice and strong. We don't want it to break off inside the cam inside the film and get lost. So it should look like that. A nice tight join. Try not to make it overlap. Try and make it nice and flat so that we can wind it, the rest of the film in like that so now your camera's pretty much finished we just need to make it light tight so what you need to start doing is taping it up so the best way to do that is to tape up all down here all over the top all over the back and all down here so that no light can get through these gaps just point out the gaps right so there's a gap here this should be pretty tight but it can still move and any way the light can get in will ruin the film so you need to type, tape all back here you need to type, tape up this hole you need to tape up the front so it can't move and again exactly the same for the other side so there's your camera pretty much finished so what we need to do is tape it up and it will look like that all taped up so you can see there's no hole at the top there's no hole at the back, no light can get in and on the other side no gaps the only way light can get in should be through the pinhole at the front this is the old film this is the new film it should look like that with one of the sprockets pointing upwards and one pointing downwards and to wind it on you just have to wind this piece anti-clockwise and it'll pull the film through ready for your next shot I would say about oh hello who's this hello I'm doing a, I'm been doing a recorded thingy that's really good quality it's good isn't it you're being recorded now I'm sorry it's alright now I can edit it all out but it might be nice anyway okay <laughs> Have intruders. Do you want me to give you a little wave? Do you want, to, do you want me to what? So you can do a little wave. Yeah, come on then, come and do a wave. Hi. That's probably made it much more entertaining because I've been really dull. <laughs> Alright then. So get yourself a ring pull to tighten it up because this is too too much friction inside this camera to, to do it yourself. It won't go round, although I am doing it, but that's because I'm strong. So, get yourself a ring pull from a drinks can, squash it down here so that it's squashed down a bit, and shove it in the side of the camera which contains the old film. This is where you're going to wind all the film onto. So, start winding it anti clockwise. You have a lot more leverage now that you've got your ring pull. And what you want to do is wind it so that it goes round and that the other side, make sure the other side spins round. Just, I'd say, if you want to keep it safe, do 360 degrees. It goes round all the way, but you can probably get away with 180 to 200 degrees. Basically, the further you wind it on, the less likely you are to overlap pictures, but you're more likely to waste film to have bigger gaps so I'd say to be safe wind it 180 and a bit more somewhere in between and then you're ready to take a picture 
remember when you're winding it on this may go around a few times before the actual film starts going through because it's taking up the slack it's gone tight now then start forcing it a little bit and then the film will start going through I'm pulling through a lot of film at the moment just to show you but I am going to wind it back because I don't want to waste any film so when you're ready to take a picture pull up the shutter and then close it again when you want to stop taking a picture indoors uh, with no daylight coming in probably 15 to 20 minutes 15 to 20 minutes of exposure will get you your picture taken although it doesn't have to be exact uh, and then outside in sunlight it can be as low as one to two seconds on a rainy day probably get away with 10 seconds but vary your exposures to try and get a mixture of different levels and there's your camera I'm just going to wind it back now so I don't waste all that film. It's a bit stiff. Ugh. So I'm going to put in the ring port in the other side and wind it back. Just so I don't waste all that film because I haven't taken any pictures on it yet. So I'm winding it back. And this is what you do when you've run out of film. When you wind it and it doesn't go any further, it means you've used up all your film. So then put the ring port in the opposite side, upside down, start winding it back so that it pulls you the way. There you go, pulling it the other way. So you get it back into its original canister. And then you can detach the other side and take it to your processing lab. You probably need to tell them that the pictures will be made on a pinhole camera and they might not be the normal size. They may be unevenly spaced. So there you go. Mine's got stiff now, so I've wound it all back to the beginning. Here you go, sorted, one pinhole camera.